have taken delivery of a new toy, this Joe Tisserie basket. I'm super excited about this because it means that you can rotisserie loads and loads of different stuff, including vegetables. So what we're gonna do today is a bit of a fridge raid. I've literally just pulled some mushrooms and tomatoes out of the fridge. I've got just some spuds from my cupboard. This sirloin I defrosted last night, been waiting to cook it for ages, and it's the perfect thing, I think, to cook in this basket. So in the centre here, we're gonna start, we're gonna put our potatoes, our main kind of, the, the bulkiest part of the meal, in one of the outside baskets on this side, we're gonna put our beautiful sirloin. We've got this insane fat cap on the outside, which is gonna just gonna kind of um, allow it to render, but also that fat is gonna drip down as it's ripping around and kind of go all over the spuds. We're gonna have beef fat spuds, and then you know the tomatoes and the mushrooms are just sort of like a given on any steak dinner for me. Obviously, the meter is the perfect choice um, of thermometer for this, just because it's completely wireless. Uh, you know, if you had a wire, you can't use a any kind of rotisserie because the wires are going to get wrapped up whereas this will just spin freely inside there and we'll have no trouble at all. I always find when I'm doing wedges like this I get out like six or seven spuds out and by the time you've cut a few you think Jesus I've got enough there so probably need less than I've, uh, I've put out but hey ho. From these herbs we just picked out the garden here just got some rosemary some sage and some marjoram okay that's going to go in so plenty of rapeseed oil. Let's just turn everything over in the, in the pan, in the pot. All right, first up then, spuds are gonna go into this middle section of the jotisserie basket. This just slides in here, and we're gonna go on the second rung down. Okay, and then just give it a little push, and second one, oops, gone down to the third. There we go. So now when they're in there, those are gonna tumble around, yeah? Next up, we're gonna go in with these tomatoes and the mushrooms. We're just gonna load those onto here. We're gonna lock those in, in exactly the same way, using the basket. Just gonna stick the meter probe into the thickest part of it. That's gonna tell us exactly when it's ready. So finally, our steak goes on top. Lock that in also, like so. Really, really easy. I love how easy this is to put together. And there we go. A full steak dinner in a rotisserie basket. How exciting is that? Set up the jotisserie. We're just gonna drop the square end into the hopper there and turn her on. Really as simple as that. And off she goes. See you when that steak is done. Look, it's already Stuff's moving around in there. Beautiful. All right, set up the cook. So it's beef, it's a steak, it is a sirloin. And we want it medium rare. That's it, man. Five minutes in, and I cannot resist having a look at this. And I promise you, I haven't peaked without you. I don't know what to expect, but let's have a look. Oh, can't see anything for smoke. God, we're getting some nice coloration from the smoke. Crisping up the fat. Oh, look at these veggies. I do reckon those spuds are gonna need longer, but that's fine. I'm gonna have to close the lid because the fat is flaring up with it, but look at those. That looks insane. <gasps> Can't wait. Okay, stage one complete. Let's get this out. Oh, yes. Look at that. With the glove, we're just gonna pop that out of the cage. Beautiful. That looks stunning. That crispy, crispy fat on there is incredible. incredible. The mushrooms are all good. So I'm just gonna load those over here. Yeah, those tomatoes were done probably 10 minutes ago. Never mind. Imagine the flavor they will have impacted though, eh? Right, and then we're just gonna load this straight back in to finish off those wedges, which let's be honest, Look pretty amazing already. Gonna knock up a real simple chimichurri just while we wait for this to rest. So I've just got some coriander, some parsley, and some more of that marjoram that we picked from the garden earlier. It's gonna, I like to chop my chimmy real rough. Half a red onion, half a red chili. A couple of cloves of garlic. Just gonna hit that with a little bit of salt and a glug of this rapeseed oil. Now it's chopped down and then just use the back of the knife, just work it into the board. That goes in. 
Then we're gonna go in with the juice of a lime, some apple cider vinegar, good glug of that. To balance that, a nice glug of honey. Rapeseed oil, plenty of rapeseed oil, and then just work everything together in the bowl. Chimney's there. Right, let's see what that extra sort of 10 minutes on those wedges has done. But trust me, they look and sound and smell the real deal. Chips on the barbecue, man. Amazing. Just gonna turn these out onto the board. Right, let's get this out then. Meat has done its job. Beautiful. Let's have a slice into that. Oh. Beautiful. Probably slicing it in the wrong direction here. There we go. Stunning angle. Let's just start that stack up again there. Let it do its thing. I'm just gonna eat this little bit. Look at the smoke ring. Mmm. Finish it with your chimney all over. More salt on these chips. But yeah. Mmm. My lord. So good. Mmm. Mmm. Excuse me. Right. Obviously the chips. There. Look at those. Look how fluffy that is inside. No pre-boiling. You saw they went in raw. That beef fat, the little initial bit of fat we put on the, at the start, maybe a little bit of the juices coming out, the mushrooms and the tomatoes, has all added to making the most incredible barbecue chips. And you can slightly taste the smoke, but it's really not overpowering. If you like what you've seen today, please don't forget to like, subscribe, drop me a message, and um, I'll see you next week.